Hi everyone, Mike here. Welcome to another Heroes and Bosses video. This time I'll be showing a method for creating realistic looking chain link fences and road signs. The first thing I've got here is a regular plastic window screen, and the mesh is perfect squares. I bought this to put new screens in my windows, but then I thought of a much better use for it. The second is fancy toothpicks. I found these in a grocery store for a couple dollars each. I got some round ones and some square ones. Next I'm cutting a rectangle of screen that's going to be the length of my fence. I'm cutting it to be roughly as tall as a standard war game or board game model. You'll notice that I'm cutting it at a 45 degree angle so that my fence will be in a diamond pattern, the same as what you'd see on a chain link fence. Now I want to space these toothpicks evenly and then cut them down to an appropriate size. I'm first scoring one with my knife and then snipping it with my cutters. Then I'll use this first one as a measuring stick for the rest. Next I'm going to add some super glue to these toothpick fence posts. It's very important that at this point that you glue the sticks to your own hand. After you peel it off, make sure you lay it glue side down and get glue all over your cutting mat. Once all the glue is on, I'm pressing down this sheet of window screen and then laying something on top of it to keep it pressed down. Next I need to attach this fence, but first I want to make it look a little beat up. I'm going to make a cut in the top few links here so I can twist the fence a bit once it's in place. I'm going to anchor all these fence posts with some green stuff. I'll start with the middle post and then angle the other ones to look like they were rocked by some kind of explosion or maybe something heavy crashing into them. Okay, next I'm going to make a warning sign of some kind. The sign itself is going to be made from plastic card and the face of the sign is going to be a decal. These particular ones and the plastic card are from Green Stuff World, but you can also buy very similar ones from Fallout Hobbies, and I'll post links to both of these places in the description. So as you can see, I'm carefully measuring the sign that I want to use so that I can use all kinds of math to make a triangle of the same size as my plastic card. A vastly easier way to do this is to cut out the decal and then just trace it onto the plastic card. I'm going to try not to put the stick glue side down this time, and then I'm going to glue my sign to the toothpick. Then just like before, I'm using a bit of green stuff to anchor it down. Once that's hardened, I'm going to cut away at the edges of the fence to make it look like it's been torn away. Now is the time when you'd want to mark out on the base where your intended model will be glued. Here are the things I'll be using in the next step. I've got some skulls from Citadel Skulls Box, some tree bark, dark earth texture from Vallejo, and some pebbles. I'll speed through the next part because it's very similar to my rocky bases video. I'm first covering the entire base with some Vallejo earth texture, being careful not to get any in the marked areas. As I go, I'm sticking things into the earth like tree bark for my rocks, some skulls and other debris. Now I'm giving that a few hours to harden, and once it's ready, I'm priming the whole base in black.
These are the three colors I'll be using for the soil. First I'm mixing some dryad bark with about twice as much water, then I'm roughly brushing this all over the earth texture. Next I'm doing a heavy dry brush or an overbrush with some Vallejo earth. I'm not removing much paint from the brush before I start going over the darker brown. I'm not trying to completely conceal the dryad bark, I want some of that darker color to come through. Next I'm painting the fence and the sign. I'm going to start off by base coating both entirely with bright silver. This one is plate mail metal from Army Painter. Next I'm going to paint the rocks and finish off the soil. The rocks are all getting a base coat of equal parts Mechanica Standard Grey and Stegodon Scale Green. Next I'm going to finish off the soil with a light dry brush of Talarn Sand. I'm just trying to pick out all these raised areas in the dirt and I'm not too worried if I hit the rocks a bit. Next I'm giving the rocks two layers of dry brushing. The first will be a fairly heavy dry brush of Dawnstone, followed by a much lighter dry brush with Ulthu and Grey. I want the skulls to look old and weathered by the elements, so I'm going to base coat all of them with Death World Forest. I'm then going to follow that up with a heavy dry brush of German Beige, and then finally a light dry brush over the facial features with Screaming Skull. The next step for the sign is to apply the decal or water transfer. First I'll get the decal wet and then let that sit for a minute, and then add some water to the surface of the sign. Normally I'd put a gloss varnish onto a surface before adding a decal, but this sign is already very smooth. After pressing down the face of the sign, I am going to add two layers of varnish. The first is a gloss varnish, Ard Coat. This is to seal the decal down. After that dries, I'll add a layer of matte varnish or a matte medium. Either one will do for this, you just want something you can paint over. So here's what we have so far. Now that the matte varnish is dried, I'm painting over the edges of the sign with black to cover over the silver edges. Next I'll be using three colors of wash to add some shadow, tint the ground and rocks, and to add some weathering to the fence and the sign. I'm starting off with the Agrax Earth Shade, and I'm focusing this on the deep grooves and pits in the mud, and also around the base of the rocks, skulls, and posts to create some shadow. I'm also splashing this randomly onto the sign and onto the fence. Do you see the blobs of wash between the chain links? I'm making sure to dab those away before they dry. Now I'm switching to Null Oil and I'm using this to darken any cracks in the rocks and to darken the sides of the rocks a bit. I'm also splashing this randomly onto the fence and the sign. The final wash I'm using is a Thonian Camel Shade. This color is great for making the ground look either polluted or to make rocks look like they're covered in algae. It also breaks up all these browns and grays. I'm putting this around the base of the rock and the fence and on random patches on the ground. The last bit of paint I'll be adding will be the rust. These are the three colors I normally use for rust, but all you really need is a dark brown and a bright orange and you can mix up your rust colors with those. I'm starting with the darkest color. This is Typhus Corrosion. I like this one because it has a fine grit mixed into it for extra corrosion power. 
I'm dabbing this randomly on the fence and sign, but I'm focusing most of it on the bottom half of these things. Next I'm switching to Mornfang Brown, and I've watered this down to a wash consistency. Again, I'm dabbing this onto the fence and the sign, and I'm also overlapping it with the typhus corrosion. I'm making sure to not completely cover over the typhus corrosion, I still want to be able to see some of that color. And finally I'm switching to the brightest rust color, and I'm going over everything again. This sign is still looking a little too pristine, so I'm using the same silver color as before to add some chipping along the edges of the sign and the post. The last thing to do before spraying this base with a matte varnish is to paint the rim. I use Tester's Dull Coat on all my miniatures, but any matte varnish will do fine. You just want something that's going to help protect your paint job. After the varnish is dried, I'm going to add some grass. I'm starting off with Citadel Grass. I always mix my PVA glue with a bit of water so it flattens out on the base a little better. The placement of my grass is mostly random, though I do like to have grass around the base of the things that are in the soil, like the fence and the rocks. Those areas seem like they'd be the least disturbed and therefore more likely to have stuff growing there. The last bit of grass I'll be adding is Wasteland Tufts from Army Painter. I like to cut these up a bit so they aren't all perfectly round patches. And there you have it, a rusty fence and sign to add some interest to your battlefield bases or post-apocalyptic terrain. If you have any interest in the model I've attached to this base, I do have upcoming content on that. Thank you very much to all my patrons for supporting me on Patreon, and a special thanks to Brian Jones for sponsoring the channel. You're all giving me the means to get new materials and experiment with new techniques. If anyone has any questions or comments, feel free to leave a comment below, and thanks for watching.